Hello and welcome. This is the second lecture on electricity, lecture N for Natural Science 102 at Danville Community College. I'm uh, Dr. Stoddard and I want to show you a couple things about electrical circuits. Uh, electrical circuits is a very vast and expansive topic, but I'm just going to share with you a few of the circuit elements, how they work, and uh, just give you a, a very basic overview of, of, uh, of things here. So uh, the first thing we have are batteries, of course. Now, uh, if you look at this uh, battery, it kind of looks like a Duracell battery. Uh, there's a minus on the, on the bottom there, and then there's a plus on the top where that little bump is, okay? And the important thing is to remember that um, electricity is the flow of electrons from the negative part of the battery to the positive part of the battery. And that flow is only going to happen if you have a continuous circle of wire or what we call a circuit. Batteries are represented by this schematic here with this uh, little red vertical line and these black lines here. That's how we indicate um, a schematic for a battery. And um, it's, it's, uh, the negative side is on the smaller of these uh, horizontal lines and the positive is on the longer of the horizontal lines okay and so what we have here in this um, animation is a uh, a depiction showing um sorry about that a depiction showing the um the electrons moving around in a circuit okay the electrons are um i don't know how to get rid of that little control well, the electrons go in a circuit from the negative part of the battery through this uh, device we'll talk about in a second up to the positive side of the battery. Okay, so it makes one, you know, a circuit. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about are resistors. Resistors have this um, color banding on this little uh, guy here, this ceramic looking thing with these wires sticking out left and right. And the schematic of this looks like a squiggly line and uh, resistors impede current flow so they slow down current and this is similar to a crinkled or bent gar garden hose you could turn on the water to your hose and if you make a bend in the um, in the hose or, or you you make it all bent in several spots the water is going to trickle out much more slowly so resistors are kind of like a temporary valve that um, impedes the flow of current so we have a couple of uh, circuits here. The one on the left is um, the electrons are moving around the circuit, uh, depicted very fast. That's, that's uh, what you kind of see there. And then on the right, what you have is a, um, a circuit that has a higher resistor. And so the uh, electrons are flowing around more slowly. So let's see that again. On the left, we have low resistance. And on the right, we have high resistance, okay? So low resistance, um, the water, I mean, the electricity travels very quickly, uh, the current's higher, and then for high resistance, the electricity is traveling more slower, okay? So that's a little bit how resistors work. We'll talk more about where we can find those later. In this diagram, I want to introduce you to light bulbs or lamps, um, the circuit a uh, schematic is shown here on the upper right and a lamp is given by that little circle and then you have that little wire in the middle of it, okay? A light bulb is a type of resistor. When electricity passes through this thin wire, it heats up so hot that it glows and it produces light. Here's a, uh, a, um, a depiction of a two volt battery operating a light bulb and you can barely see the electricity flowing in the circuit and the light bulb itself is very dim, indicated by the length of those little yellow lines coming off of the light bulb, okay? Um, over here, we have, again, the same circuit, but we have a nine volt battery. I know it doesn't look like a nine volt battery, but it's a higher voltage. And what you can see is that the light bulb is uh, brighter, okay? It's brighter. The electrons are still flowing around with the same uh, current and flow in the in the circuit here, but the light bulb is brighter, okay? So a higher volt battery will give you a brighter light 
because it's more powerful. We'll talk more about uh, voltage in, in a bit, okay? Here I want to introduce you to switches. On the schematic on the very upper right hand side of this uh, slide here, we have a, a break in the circuit. Remember, in order for electrons to flow through the whole circuit and make its round, it has to have a continuous wire. But a switch is a temporary break in the circuit, and you can see how this line's pointing up. That means that it's open. An open switch means off in the ordinary English language we use for a switch. You have on and off in, in circuit. In physics, we, we say open or closed, okay? So this is an open switch. It's an open circuit, okay? And when you close the switch here on the picture with my light bulb shining brightly with my battery, it says the switch is closed. That creates a closed circuit. So electricity is allowed to flow. Um, it makes a circuit and the light bulb goes on, okay? Let's watch what happens now as I uh, take a look at this and open the circuit. If you open the circuit, the uh, electrons are immediately stopped from making its round and the light bulb goes off. So that's how light switches work, okay? You're actually creating a break in the circuit. So a light switch on the on position closes the circuit and electricity is allowed to flow through a, a circuit and the off position of a switch disconnects wires there behind your wall and it prevents electrons from flowing through your light bulb. Okay, so I wanna talk about uh, two different situations, parallel and series, okay? Now, in this case, we have two switches that are in parallel. Um, parallel means side to side, so you can see how they're one above one another and they're side to side like this, okay? So these two switches are side to side. And remember this little circle thing with that little squiggle is a wire, I mean a light bulb, okay? And this is all hooked up by wires and a battery. So how will electricity flow? Let's take a look at the actual device, not the schematic. And you can see how we have two switches. So which of these switches will cause the light bulb to light up? So think about that. Which of these two switches will cause the light bulb to light up? Will it be the bottom switch or the top switch? Or either or none? Let's take a look at this. Okay. So here's my top switch. switch. And if I close Something it, you can see it creates a loop electricity. for electricity, electricity to flow through the light bulb it. and it lights up brightly. Let's turn that off. What about the bottom switch? Ah, the bottom switch also allows electricity to travel through that loop and the light bulb what lights What do you think up. will happen if I close both? Okay, so that's a situation in your house like where you have a hallway and you have one light in the middle of the hallway and you wanna be able to turn that lights on at one end of the hallway and also at the other end of the hallway. So this is exactly that situation where you have two switches that control one light. Now what these do you switches. think is gonna happen I no if I close both of these switches? If you close both of these it switches, goes through the, the electricity path. takes the short, short path. Circuit. We call that the oh, short circuit. Electricity circuit. always goes through the path of that it means resistance. this battery is connected to that battery path when possible, and that's called a short circuit. All right, let's talk about switches that are arranged in series. So these two switches are not in parallel. They're not next to each other. They're in the same line, uh, one after another, so we call that series. Now, the electricity can only flow through the circuit if both switches are closed or turned on, okay? So let's take a look at the actual device here. We've got a battery and some wires hooked up to our light bulb on the right, and we've got two different switches up on the top. And let's go ahead and play the animation here. So if I close this top left switch, nothing happens yet because there's a break in the wire on the right. When was light okay, here? so it doesn't matter if I turn the right switch or the left switch, there's always going to be a break in the wires, okay? So no electricity flows. But if I close both, then there's going to be a continuous circuit that is going to go through and the light bulb is going to light up. 
All right, so either of these switches can break the circuit. Continuing on, let's think about controlling three lights. I have uh, rooms in my house, for example, that have two or three lights. For example, in the bathroom, you might have three light bulbs above your vanity or above the mirror there. And you'll notice that if you switch the light switch on, all three of these lights go on at once. Okay, and if you turn the light switch off, all three light bulbs turn off at once. So let's talk about how we can control three lights all at once or one by one, okay? So you'll notice here that the lights are in series. They're one after another, okay? So light bulb one is in a series with a light bulb two in series with light bulb three, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at a circuit animation here. So we've got uh, our battery, we've got our switch, and then we've got three light bulbs here on the right. And let's see what happens when I close the uh, switch. When I close the switch, the light bulbs are all illuminated because the circuit can make its round through the switch and each of the three light bulbs. So there's a continuous circuit there. And if you open the switch, it turns off, okay? So that's just like how I described in your bathroom where you would want to uh, turn on three lights or off all three lights with just one switch. Okay, now let's say I had three different lights in my house. Say I had a, a kitchen and I had three different lights, one above the sink, one in the main room, and then maybe one off to the side somewhere, okay? So three different switches. I don't want to control all of these lights with just one switch. I want to control which lights turn on. So how are we able to do that? Let's look at some scenarios here, okay? So how are we able to turn on only one of the lights? So let's look at a situation where we have light bulbs all wired up in series, okay? What do you think is gonna happen? So here's my device, I've got my battery, I've got the wires hooked up to the different light bulbs and I've got three different switches, okay? So let's animate this and see what might happen. So if I click the bottom switch, great. That light bulb lights up quite brightly and it seems to be working. And I can turn it off and it turns off. The second, oops, the second switch is not controlling only the light bulb number two because the circuit allows electricity to pass through two lights. And the third switch, well, that didn't work. All three lights are turning on because the electricity is allowed to pass through all three light bulbs and the switch. So you'll notice also that the light bulbs are different brightnesses. And if you try to turn on all three lights, well, then only the one light is lit because again, you have a short circuit. Electricity is gonna travel through the least resistance or the shortest path. So that didn't work at all. We don't wanna wire things up um, in series. So let's try to do something else. We once again want to have a light switch that only operates one light, all right? But we have three lights and we have three light switches. So let's try again to uh, wire this up, but this time we're going to put the light bulbs in parallel. Parallel means next to each other, okay? So let's take a look at the device here. So we've got a battery okay, with the plus and minus terminals. And we have one uh, switch and a light bulb parallel to another switch and a light bulb parallel to another switch and a light bulb. So let's play this animation and see what happens. Okay, so again, we've got three different parallel circuits and we've got our battery and the negative terminal is lined up with all the light bulbs on the right, and the positive terminal is lined up with each of the switches on the left. So let's go ahead and close this switch here, and you can see how the electricity nicely flows around this circuit, and the light bulb is very bright. Let's turn that off. Let's turn on the middle light, and you can see the electricity animated here with the electrons going through the wires, goes through this second circuit, and the light bulb is very bright. And similarly with the third circuit, we can have the electrons going around the circuit and the light bulb is very bright. 
you can also turn on one, two, or all three light bulbs, and they all seem to have about the same brightness according to this uh, simulation. And you can turn off one or, or more of the lights. So that's just like how you would have it in your house, where all three lights can be on, maybe just one light could be on, or two lights could be on, and you have control over exactly which lights are on or off. So you want things to be wired up in parallel like this in order to control that. If in your vanity you want one light switch to control three lights, that's when you want them to be in series. Now, how do we control the brightness of a light bulb? Okay, so first of all, when the resistance is low, the light bulb is going to shine very brightly. So on the uh, left side, I have a large resistance labeled under this figure here. And don't worry too much about uh, the labels and numbers here, but this is a large resistance. Um, the resistor is, is this ceramic kind of tube with these color bands on it, and it says 10 above that. So that's a large resistance. And on the right, this is a small resistance. Again, we have the color bands, and, the, and it says 1 there. Okay, Don't worry about that little omega thing. So we have large resistance on the left, and the light bulb is dimmer because you're impeding current flow. There's not as much current that can go through uh, the system to supply enough electricity for it to light up brightly. And on the right, you have a very small resistance, so electricity can go through there very quickly. Higher current makes the light bulb bright, uh, more bright, okay? Um, <clears throat> Now, this is useful when you have a dimmer switch in your house. For example, sometimes you want a light to be on or off, but sometimes you want to adjust the uh, brightness of the light, and you have a couple different kinds of uh, dimmer switches. A dimmer switch is a variable resistor. You can increase the resistance to make the light dimmer, or you can decrease the resistance to turn uh, the light brighter, and you can turn it off, sometimes by clicking the, the rotary button or sliding the slider all the way to the bottom. So on the left is a rotary uh, dimmer switch, and in the middle is a, a slider dimmer switch. And basically these are, once again, just a variable um, resistor. Now if you're buying LED lights, you need to be careful that you buy the dimmable kind. If you look carefully at the back, of this um, labeling here for some 60 watt um, LED light bulbs. Over on the right, you see LED, A19, daylight, and then right below that, it says non dimmable. So this will not work with a dimmer switch. So if you do want LEDs that can be controlled with a dimmer, make sure you buy the right kind of LEDs. Now, what about voltage? We talked about how a two volt battery won't make the light very bright but a nine volt battery will make the uh, light bulb very bright. Well, voltage is sometimes called electromotive force. And uh, this is a force that causes electrons to move through a battery. In the case of um, these Duracell batteries, it's an electrochemical reaction that forces electrons through a circuit, okay? And this is analogous to uh, a pump. So here on the left, we've got one of those pitcher pumps, old fashioned you know, kind of farm pumps that you use manually to pump water out. And uh, basically that's a pump, okay? And you're pushing water through a hose or something like that. So that's the same thing how these batteries work, okay? In the middle, we have some nine volt batteries, which are those kind of square rectangular uh, kind of batteries that we are used in the smoke detectors most oftenly. And then we have a 1.5 volt AA battery, and that's used in many portable electronic devices or smaller flashlights. And, and an analogy for voltage, again, with water, is shown up here on the upper right-hand corner. Um, <clears throat> if you have a bucket of water that's filled up very high, <clears throat> excuse me, then there's going to be more pressure on the water. And if the water level is very short, okay, there's going to be less water in there, and there's going to be less pressure. So you can think about voltage as water pressure, okay? A nine volt battery is gonna deliver uh, a certain punch, okay, compared to a 1.5 volt battery, which is not gonna provide as much force for the flow of electrons through a current, through a, a circuit. So 
Here's uh, some comparisons and contrast between the different situations. On the very left, we have a two volt battery operating the identical battery as a four volt in the middle and a six volt battery on the right. So a six volt battery on the right is more powerful to create a brighter light bulb and a low voltage battery will create a dimmer uh, uh, light bulb, okay? Now dimmer switches do not work by, uh, technically the voltage in your house is the same voltage everywhere, okay? So you're not switching out a battery for a different battery, okay? But uh, when your light, when your flashlight starts getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, it means the batteries are going bad because it's no longer eight volts, it's maybe six volts or five volts or four volts, and then finally it's just so dim you can't see it really, okay? So that's uh, how voltage uh, works. And we all know there's different types of batteries and these different types of batteries generally have different voltages. All right, so what about power? You've heard of, we've heard of voltage, okay? We've heard of current, which is flow of electricity. And then power is measured in watts. And this, the term watts or kilowatts or kilowatt hours might be familiar uh, to you. And so we've learned that light bulbs will shine more brightly with higher current, okay, and also higher voltage. And it turns out that power is a combination of the two. It's a combination of current, which we give symbol I, and voltage, which makes sense, we give symbol V. And so power is equal to current times voltage, okay? Current times voltage gives you watts. And so here's an example uh, calculation. We've got a Nexus 5, I think that's a pretty old phone, a Nexus 5 battery is rated to deliver 3.8 volts and 2.3 uh, amp hours. We'll just call it amperes for now, okay? So what does that mean? If it's charged at 3.8 volts, okay, so first of all, it is charged at 3.8 volts, okay? You plug in an adapter into your wall and then you plug in your phone charger and it's delivering 3.8 volts to the Nexus battery, okay? And a current of 2.3 amperes for one hour, that's where the H comes from, H stands for hour, so 2.3 amperes delivered over one hour will theoretically fully charge that 2.3 ampere hour capacity battery, okay? So 2.3 amps, one whole hour at that voltage will charge your phone up. In theory, maybe this battery doesn't have fast charging capability and it won't be possible to do that in one hour, but that's the, that's the theory, okay? So what's the power? Well, we can use that formula. The power is equal to the current times the voltage. The current is 2.3 amps and the voltage is 3.8 volts. So this is the one, I guess the first time in our class we've used the calculator. If you multiply 2.3 times 3.8, you get 8.74 watts or 8.7 capital W, okay? Uh, Power usage is used everywhere and there's different uh, power ratings on different devices in your, in your house, okay? A modern iPhone charger might be 18 watts. The energy efficient LEDs uh, right above my head right now might be seven watts, okay? So they're very energy efficient. A hair dryer can be between 800 to 1800 watts, depending on its, if it's on the low or the high setting. And a small home generator, it might be 3,000 watts because you've got to run your, uh, maybe your heater or your refrigerator or some very big appliances. A home water heater uh, runs at 4,000 watts, okay? I know somebody with a smaller 3,000 watt generator and they can't really operate their water heater. They can keep their refrigerator going when the power goes out and some lights to be comfortable but they still have to take a cold shower because 3,000 watts is less than 4,000 watts. So they turn off their water heater, but they run some of the other appliances to be more comfortable. Now, what about modern circuits? Modern circuits are very complicated devices. Uh, microchips, for example, are small devices with millions of circuits. If you were to accidentally break your phone and look at the insides of it, you wouldn't recognize things because it looks very different than these big, huge batteries and stuff that we've been showing. 
and they're usually composed of PCBs. PCB stands for printed circuit boards. I misspelled that, I'm sorry. Uh, but they're very complicated and mass produced. So let's look at a uh, real live example of one. This, I believe, is a, uh, a microwave uh, circuit board. Y if your microwave is on the fritz or it needs to be replaced, you can um, replace the circuit board, not the whole microwave. It might save you some money. And let me just point out some devices on this. These, uh, the white oval there uh, is highlighting some resistors. And remember, those are those tubes with the colored bands on them. Okay. Microchips are uh, small black squares and all these little gray uh, silvery kind of things coming off uh, each of the edges are contacts that connect it to other wires in the circuit board. And this is basically a microchip or a computer brain. Okay, there can be co uh, processing power and a computer in there to compute different things, okay? Uh, I'm pointing to some little uh, threads. It looks like those little lines. Those little lines are actually wires. You can think of them as small highways for electricity. And when you look at this, it almost looks like you're, you're in a helicopter looking down on a city. And those highways are basically circuits or wires for electricity to flow through. We haven't talked about this, but these are capacitors, these very large uh, round things. Those are capacitors which hold charge like batteries and you can think of those as uh, miniature power plants or uh, water towers in a city. Okay. This device here is a fuse. Uh, very important to design a fuse in your circuits. And this is a safety switch that prevents frying the whole circuit. So if water spilled on this or it got too much power for some reason, um, there's a little wire in there that acts as a resistor. And if too much current passes through that wire, it heats up so much that the type of metal that's um, is made of that wire will will melt and break and it will snap uh, the, and it will open the circuit open means it stops the flow of electricity to all of those other expensive sensitive components so before buying one of these you want to check to make sure that your fuse is still good if the fuse is bad it means all you need to do is replace the fuse and you'll have a working microwave back again so that's it on circuits and electricity. I hope you liked the video. If you learned a little bit, you thought it was helpful, please like, give a thumbs up, and please do consider subscribing to my video to let others know that um, you found this useful. Thank you and have a great day.